Hi, hello there. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are setting up my reading journal for the month of August. If you have been following my digital plan with me, so you'll recognize these stickers right here as they are the ones that I've been using recently in my digital plan with me. I did want to print them out on clear sticker paper and kind of add them into my reading journal so that I could have a library cozy bookish theme. I know it's common and not unusual, not original at all, but I did feel like in my reading journal, I should at least have one reading book library type theme. So that's what I'm doing this month. The font style that I'm using this month is going to be a serif font. This is not actually something I've ever tried to letter before. so. It was a little bit difficult for me and it's definitely not perfect. So I originally wanted to do like solid fill-ins, but since my lettering itself was so imperfect, I opted to kind of just scribble in to the open spaces of the serif font. I'm also using only sapia tone mi microns this month. Um, I thought that black would be a little bit too bold and the sepia tone would be more cozy library theme-ish. So this first page is my monthly page, which I do have every month. Um, I'll have a calendar below the August and then I did put the quote this month on the same page. I am using a quote that's from an advanced reader copy that I recently read. It's called The Fatal Rose, and it says every book is as worthy as the next. And since I was doing a library theme, I don't know how many more times I'm going to say that. Uh, since I was doing a library theme, I thought that that would be a really good quote to kind of fit in with the aesthetic. This is the first time that I'm actually doing kind of a double spread monthly spread. Uh, so... That is the main reason that my quote is on the same page here because I kind of had to remove one of my other pages in order to have my August and calendar on these two pages. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to have the bookcase sticker on each side so that it would look kind of similar to a library. big bar shape that I have over on the left hand side of my calendar I'm actually going to add two more boxes inside and I'll fill them in based on how I will fill in this calendar so normally I will color the date if I've read and then have an indication of if I've also finished a book that day I just really like the way that it looks when I'm flipping back through so that I can see like oh I read however many days this month and I finished books on each of these particular days. I really just like the way it looks. One thing I do want to mention before I completely forget is that it was so overcast and then sh sunshiny and then stormy just all over the place the last couple of days. I tried my best while editing the video to kind of make the color and everything like seamless, but it's not. I'm, I'm not a pro yet. So just in case you notice the light fluctuating, um, that is why. Because of the weather outside, I use, I film in front of my window, so I use mostly natural light. But I did supplement with my ring light in this one because it was just so all over the place. But just in case, I just wanted to mention that I'm aware I tried. I don't know that I did a great job, but I tried. This next page that we're on is going to be my to be read page. I see a lot of comments from other YouTubers specifically about how they don't like to be read pages because they feel 
like they have to read those books. For me in particular, that's not what I use my to be read page for. I mean, the name, maybe I should change what I call it, honestly. Uh, I basically use it as a list of books that I know that I want to read. And if I can't think of what I want to read next, I'll reference back to my to be read page and then just pick one of those books if I'm not feeling any certain type of way or craving any certain type of book. Moving on, the next page that I'm working on now is my method and time page. So last month, I did not track how long I was reading each day. I just tracked what type, what method of reading I did. I did really like how that like worked out and I liked marking off which method I read. But I did also miss kind of tracking how long I read each day. So for this next month, I'm going to try both. So I've got three little kind of file folder calendars up at the top. And I have each one for audio, physical, and digital books. So for my time tracking, I'm going to track if I read from... Well, I guess one minute to 30 minutes each day, 30 minutes to an hour and a half, an hour and a half to three hours, and then three or more hours. For the most part, I'm usually in the range of 30 minutes to one and a half hours that I'll be reading. But sometimes, especially if I'm listening to audiobooks, I can go over three hours. So I like to have a pretty decent range here. And now I'm working on another serif heading these took me so long the tracing over them over the sketch that i did took me an incredibly lengthy amount of time and that's not even considering how long it took me to kind of sketch the headings in so uh, hope they came out good <laughs> um, i'm sure when i look back on this like at the end of the month i'll just really love it so um i'm okay with it if you'll notice here next to where my time is, I stuck my arm in my ink pad when I was stamping to be read. And so there's a giant ink smudge over there on the corner of my page. So that's cool. I am going to stamp in books from this stamp set. It is from Studio Calico. No, this one is from Paper Person. I actually got it on sale for, I think, $15. Um, so I'm going to use the basic books uh, to stamp into my bookshelf. I did not prep my stamp well enough. So when I start on the middle section, it just, it doesn't really look very good. The top shelf and the bottom shelf look great, but since I didn't prep my stamp well enough, like it didn't hold the ink and then I tried to stamp over it and it just, it didn't look good. <laughs> so the top shelf and the bottom shelf look great. The middle shelf, meh. So I will add in uh, each day of the month to each of these books and then the color coding here that I've added for my time frame. When that day comes, I'll just go ahead and color the book in based on how long I've read. I didn't put like a do not read time frame on here, which I mean, sometimes I don't read, so I kind of feel like I should have had one there. So I'll probably just pick a random color. Moving on to my next two pages, I have my stats and my totals. Last month, I separated my totals into its own page and I really like that. I haven't filled them in yet because it's not the end of the month, but I know that I'm gonna like that more than what I was doing previously. So I am going to total up my books read, my pages read, my time to read, so how long it takes me to read the books, like the average, the amount of genres that I read, and then how many physical books, how many digital books, and how many audio books I read for the month of August. 
It's probably not necessary that I track all of this, but I just, I really like filling it all in. So here we are. Even if I mult even if I have multiple places with this information, it doesn't bother me. I like it. On the page to my left is going to be my stats page. And I'm doing this one differently. For the past three months? Since May, however many months that is. I have just kind of had like a list going with my stats. But to me, it just feels very jumbled all together. Like I can't really differentiate books from another. So I'm actually gonna try a different method this time where I'm adding a space in between each book that I fill in my stats for. And I'll have a picture on screen in a minute or two, uh, kind of showing what my current stats page looks like filled in um, and versus what I'm doing now. So I've got each book to have its own little section and then I'm gonna alternate coloring them in as well. And on my stats page, I write the title of the book, the page count of the book, the genre of the book, the method read, and then the date that I started it and the date that I ended it. So it's super helpful for me to have these two pages next to each other because most of the stuff that I'm doing in my totals is gonna be basically based off of my stats. And then here's the photo of my current journal. Um, and what my stats page looks like. And I don't know if it's just my handwriting or what, but like I feel like it just kind of all runs together. Even with me highlighting each individual book, it just still wasn't helping me. So I think having them separated into their own little boxes will be super helpful and this will probably be how I do this going forward. These stickers that I'm pulling out here are from Paper Minty Studio and I'm using the book corner sticker set. I thought that the little girl leaning against the wall reading was super cute and then since I added one sticker to my totals page I'm kind of flipping through and seeing if I can add some of the other stickers elsewhere throughout my spreads for the month of August so that it kind of all links together. This next spread is my new word spread, um, something that I am continuing to use. So I am adding it to this month as well. At the very bottom here, I'm doing kind of like a book doodle, kind of like what you would see on a bookshelf. And I'm gonna color those in. I just kind of wanted something to be on this page. And really I couldn't think of anything that I liked as much as I did for July with the shooting stars and stuff. So I thought a book, kind of bookshelf situation at the bottom, like a book stack thing. I felt like that would be kind of good considering I'm doing a bookish theme. My favorites page is next. And I think that this page ends up being my favorite for this month. Um, I'm kind of flipping and flopping back and forth between the two pages. I figured if I was doing my words uh, tracing my serif font, then I might as well just do it across both pages. Uh, but my favorite page, my video ends up cutting out a little bit before I'm finished. So I don't have me like adding stickers and adding a few extra doodles at the end. Um, I really need to invest in like an extra battery pack and an extra or bigger memory card, honestly. Um, so after my video cuts out and I realize it, I do end up kind of just stopping filming for the day and going and, you know, removing everything off my card, charging my battery. And then I came back and finished the filming today before I'm doing this voiceover.
So the stamp set that I'm using uh, for my favorites page is actually from Sheen. <laughs> I forgot for a moment what it was called. Uh, so it's from Sheen and uh, the other book stack that I use is also from that same stamp set. Aside from me kind of butchering the first side of the stack, uh, not getting enough ink on the stamp. I do really like the way that this turns out. Right there, I was just kind of seeing which book stamps would work the best. I just knocked my tripod all over the place. Sorry about that. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of color all of these in to match the books on the New Words page to kind of make both of the spreads a little bit cohesive. The colors I'm using here for my Tombow brush pens are N49, N79, N89, 679, and 228. I really like the way all of these looked together. I actually sat down for a while like swatching colors before I sketched all this out and I'm pretty glad with the with the way that the colors turned out. I also like that this darker color that I'm using, I believe that's the N49, it kind of covers up the missing ink from where I messed up while stamping. <laughs> Yay! And here we are, new day. This is the stuff that I did this morning. So the last spread that I have here is going to be my first four books read. This is the spread that I, I haven't used it like solely since I started this journal, but of all of the ones that I've tried for like my review spreads, this is my absolute favorite. So I've been placing like a small washi tape at the bottom. Um, this one I think covers like three squares. So the washi tape that covers that size. If it's any bigger than that, I feel like I don't have enough room to write. And then I normally add a border to the top and kind of outline where I'm going to paste my book cover. So the size that I use for my book covers are I believe the width I do as 1.5 inches because I just add them all to a Word document and print them out at once, which ends up being eight squares wide by 12 squares long. So I do a double line uh, so that it doesn't need to look perfect. And then I'll go in and I'll do an accent color on the right line and the bottom line. And then recently I have been adding kind of like a border to the center, uh, which I do in this video as well. I use this stamp set up in the top right hand corner of the screen by Studio Caligo. Um, I use the dots there on that stamp set to kind of do my border. I didn't have anything really bookish or library type related that I could use as a border. So I figured just basic dots would be fine. The book sticker that I just added there was a freebie from Leela Journals. I ordered some stamp stickers from her a while ago, and that was one of the freebies that I got. So here I'm just flipping back to get the order that I put the general information for the book that I'm filling out. On these pages, I keep track of the title, the author, the genre, the format that I read the book, 
the rating that I gave the book and I put a favorite quote down as well. I also have a thoughts header that I put on here and I'll highlight it the same color that I do my general book information but I do that after I add the quote because who's to know how long the quote that I'm gonna like best for that book is gonna be. <laughs> so that's something that I'll add later on when I'm actually filling in my review. My stamping started out so well for this border but I don't know what happened I just got completely lopsided. <laughs> so the last thing that I'm going to add here is a little bit of grid effect. Um, I did add this throughout the rest of the August spreads as well to kind of fill in some empty space because I realized that I didn't use any washi tape at all this month except for on this spread that we're looking at right now. So I am going to add this little grid to this page and then when we flip back through and do the uh, final flip through, you'll see it added to other pages as well. But that's the last thing that I have today. Leave me a comment below and let me know what your favorite spread of my journal is this month. Mine, like I said earlier, is the favorite book spread, but I'm curious to know if, you, if any of you have a favorite as well. Uh, anyways. That is all I have for today. Thank you so much. You have a great rest of your day and a great week ahead. Thanks. Bye.